Architecture Codex. If you want to see more, like, comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe. For the first 7,000 years of human history, buildings got built by the master builder. The Greek roots for the word architect are archi, master, and tekton, builder. This meant to become an architect, a person, usually a man, would start off as an apprentice, work their way up to journeyman, and eventually become a master. And when they became a master of all the trades, they were the architect, the master builder. For this to happen, the trade or the guild would need to instruct that young person on the techniques, the methods, and the aesthetics that were architecture. But somewhere in the 19th century, the elite and the powerful decided architecture was fun and needed to specialize and went about transforming the process so a person could become an architect without ever getting their fingernails dirty. They would still need to understand the building process detailing, structure, and building technology, but it would be done using pencil on paper for someone else to build. And today we see this trend continue where some architects believe their job is simply to come up with pretty pictures and big ideas and hand the thing off to engineers and contractors who have to figure out how to build the damn thing. Perhaps the last great architect who was truly a master builder was Pierre Luigi Nerve. And nothing better represents to me that combination of architect and builder than his Palazzetto della Sport. Built for the 1960 Summer Olympics in Rome, it was just one of many buildings that Nerve used his construction technique known as ferro cemento. The first concrete dome was the Pantheon, built in ancient Rome. And when Rome fell, the recipe for concrete was lost and not rediscovered until the 19th century. Pierre Luigi Nerve was an Italian, trained as an engineer, but his buildings so linked structure and design, it would be appropriate to call him an architect as well. Looking at his portfolio of buildings, you can see the building is structure. Too many buildings, particularly today, use structure as a trick to create arbitrary shapes or blobs. But since, in Nerve's buildings, the structure is the architecture, that honest expression is as completely impressive as any structure in Gothic architecture. Because of material shortages after World War II, Nerve's construction company, Nerve and Bartoli, experimented with and expanded the use of a 19th century French innovation known as ferro cement, or in Italian, ferro cemento, literally iron and cement. This technique saves material, but it is more labor intensive as it uses thin steel meshes and thin amounts of cement to create shell structures with deformation in two planes that have an innate structural property. Technically, it is not concrete as there is no large aggregate, the pebble or gravel, that gives cement something to which it can bind. Ferrocemento uses only sand and therefore can be thinner. Before computers, the math of such structures was nearly impossible, and so experimentation and intuition with the guiding design principles, as was done in the first 7,000 years of human history. Nerve found that troweling the cement around and through the steel mesh lathe was better than casting the ferro cement in forms, as most of concrete is worked today. By the way, concrete and ferro cement do not dry, that is, give off their water and become hard like the way they used to make ancient bricks. Instead, there is an exothermic chemical reaction that allows all the ingredients to combine, and therefore it sets, it does not dry. Concrete gets a bad rap in sustainable building today because its production releases a lot of CO2. Like much of the rhetoric, it is overstated, and I am cautious of claims made by vested interests when their hypocrisy is obvious. Like every building material, there are advantages and disadvantages to its use. But that is a much larger issue which we cannot address in this short video. Much of Nerve's innovations are no longer employed today because they are labor intensive. Reducing labor costs, which can be half the cost of a building, is the best way to reduce building costs. What freed Nerve to experiment and innovate in architecture? 
Part of it was that he had the means to physically test his ideas because he was so closely linked with actual construction. And so his ideas literally became concrete enough that he was confident it could be used in an actual building. Today, technical innovation by architects is just too risky in a litigious society. So that role has been taken on by the manufacturers with deeper pockets who produce the products we specify. Much of what is called innovative architecture these days is an architect's attempt to innovate by just being different, not necessarily better. And these innovative architects rely on the expertise of manufacturers, engineers, and technicians to figure out what to do. Most leading architects are so separate from the building process that the how to build their building is a completely alien thing to them. This means they are not master builders. They are merely building fashion designers. Palazzetto dello Sport was one of a series of buildings that Nerve did specifically for the 1960 Rome Olympics. The name means small house of sport. And it is smaller than the Palazzo dello Sport, which means house of sport. Both are covered arenas, whereas the Stadio Flaminio is an open field with stands and a cantilevered cover over the good seats. I like the Palazzetto most for two reasons. I like the way the expressive cement columns emerge from the ground, split into branches, and then meshes with the weave of ferro cemento from the other columns. Some of the structural pieces were precast, which is another of Nerve's pioneering techniques. The columns from the outside and the ceiling you see from the inside is the structure and not some decorative element. Beauty is not attached to it. The building is about truth, the response to the immutable forces of gravity, and from that truth, the beauty is derived. Truth is universal. It is not subjective. Poet John Keats said in his poem, Ode to a Grecian Urn, Beauty is truth, truth beauty. And in the Gospel of John, Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And the second reason that I like the Palazzetto dello Sport? When I was studying in Rome, I was able to take fencing lessons in one of the side gyms of this amazing building. I know it surprises you that I am capable of being sentimental. And that sentimentality leads me to mourn that such a great building is currently abandoned. Perhaps its abandonment is metaphoric given we live in an age in which many people do not believe in an absolute truth. We are dazzled by shiny new architecture that is superficial and ultimately vapid. Palazzetto della Sport has entered that age between 40 and 80 years when great buildings and people appear to be old and are misunderstood. If it can survive another 20 years, perhaps new appreciation will emerge and the building will become venerable. It is not too late for Palazzetto della Sport. I'm Michael Molinelli, and this is Architecture Codex.